Ah, a new animal crossing town. There's nothing quite like that feeling of starting a fresh life and building your world from the ground up. Whether you enjoy collecting items, collecting bugs and fish, or earning money, there's something to accomplish every day in the world of Animal Crossing. But let's be honest, the first day can be rough. You're slapped with a massive debt, you're forced into work by a raccoon, and any other means of earning money afterwards are minor. You can't even catch any valuable bugs or fish around town yet, because the only tool available to you on the first day is a shovel. So, what do most people do on their first day to earn money? Perhaps run some errands for villagers, shake trees, pick up seashells, dig stuff up, and sell whatever you find at Tom Nook. That's fine and all, but you probably won't even earn enough to pay off your first debt. If you're an experienced Animal Crossing player, you may even know about the money rock and the strat to earn over 13,000 bells off of it. But then what? This is how to earn millions of bells on your first day in Animal Crossing. The first thing I want to mention is the time and day your first day starts on. For example, it may currently be November at 8am when you start a new town, or perhaps April at 2am, or even August in the middle of the day. Your first day may even fall on a holiday. The point is your first day could start on any time or any day of any year. Is that important for this video? The answer is yes and no. The reason why it is important is because we'll be talking to villagers and villagers follow a specific schedule depending on the time and day of the year, as well as the current event state, but we'll cover that in more detail soon. First, it's important to understand how villagers work in Animal Crossing. Of course, there are many different species of animals that can inhabit your town, however, that actually has no effect on any dialogue interaction you will have with any villager. The only difference it has is the physical size and shape of that species' three-dimensional model. So then, how does the game distinguish between characteristics of different villagers, such as male or female, or other traits? The answer is a personality value. Each villager has a unique identifying ID in the game's code, which is used to populate the rest of the villager's default data, such as their starting shirt, catchphrase, and personality. There are six different types of personalities in the game shown here. Three for males, three for females. The personality trait is what gives the interaction with each animal a feeling of uniqueness. Each personality type comes with their own set of dialogue interactions. Any villager in your town that share a personality are essentially identical in every way except for their physical appearance and location in the town. Anything one villager says can also be said by another villager with that same personality. This knowledge will be key to making millions of bells on your first day. You see, there are different sets of dialogues for each villager personality. Some of these dialogues are favorable in which a villager may give you free stuff, offer to sell you stuff, or even buy your stuff for a certain price. Typically these dialogues are rare, and even if you happen to trigger one, usually you'll only get somewhere between 500 to 3000 bells. This isn't really groundbreaking considering how infrequent these dialogues typically occur. However, there is a specific rare dialogue that can trigger from a peppy personality villager under specific conditions that we can exploit. Not only are there different sets of dialogues for different personalities, there are also different sets of dialogues depending on the villager's current mood. Villagers can be neutral, happy, sad, or mad. There are many ways to change a villager's mood, but for the purposes of this video, we're really only interested in making a villager happy. There's some ways to make a villager happy through normal dialogue interaction, but it's heavily luck-based and may not be possible at all depending on the circumstances. The fastest and most reliable way to make a villager happy is to have them talk to other villagers. Their mood will be set with approximately equal odds between neutral, happy, sad, or mad after every interaction. And to get villagers to talk to each other, they need to be both outside in the same acre at the same time. This can be challenging to accomplish. Here is the typical villager schedule that I have compiled. Villagers will wake up at a certain time, stay inside for a while before going inside, will have a meal halfway through their day, and finally return inside for a while before going to bed. This table is valuable in order to coordinate villagers being outside at the same time. However, there are exceptions to this typical schedule. Here we have a complete villager schedule exceptions table. As you can see, many holidays will affect a villager's typical schedule. 
If you're starting your first day during any holiday or event season, please be aware of these exceptions. One interesting thing to note is villagers will always be outside and be awake when a player is still completing chores for Nook. This can be exploited if needed. For example, if you start your first day during igloo season and the peppy villager decides to build an igloo and be unavailable for the rest of the day, you can start a second character and before you complete chores with that player, your peppy villager will be back outside their house ready to give you money. So, to summarize where we're at so far, what we need is access to a peppy villager who shares an acre with another villager and will be outside at the same time as them under typical schedule conditions. That means step one is to find a town that meets these conditions. After getting through Rover and Tomnook's introduction dialogue, which takes a solid four and a half minutes, you can go to the train station and check the town map. Conveniently, every town starts with exactly one villager of each personality. Here's a list of all the villagers in the game, grouped by personality, and color-coded by species for your reference. So, just keep resetting until you get a town with the peppy villager that shares the same acre as another villager. This occurs about 15-25% to of the time, and I happen to get it on my first try for this demonstration. Once you get a town that will work, you can actually immediately start making millions of bells without any other setup before putting that iconic work uniform on. However, it's more efficient to complete chores and buy a shovel in order to trap villagers with holes so that they don't keep walking away from each other. Regardless, the plan is to get the peppy villager to interact with another villager repeatedly until the peppy villager starts whistling and cheerfully walking around, indicating they are happy. This is most easily accomplished by trapping two villagers close enough to each other so that they will interact. Then, you can enter and exit the acre over and over again to force these interactions until the peppy villager is happy. It's important to note if you're trapping your villagers with holes like I am, if you walk too far away from the acre, the holes will despawn. And if you don't walk far away enough, the villagers won't immediately interact again upon entering their acre. For this reason, I usually dig holes in the other acre, seven spaces away from the acre edge, so I go far enough to trigger a new villager interaction but not too far to despawn the holes. So, once the peppy villager is happy, you can start raising friendship with the villager to increase the odds of the dialogue we're looking for. The top right corner shows our peppy villager's friendship value. This value is assigned by it ranging between negative 128 to 127. Once this value has reached 120, the villager's friendship value is effectively maxed, although it can still go as high as 127. There are many ways to increase a villager's friendship. You can complete chores for the villager, send them letters and gifts, but the easiest way is to simply interact with them. Every time you talk to them and ask them what's up, their friendship value will increase by one and possibly increase further depending on their dialogue and your response to what they ask. The higher your friendship value, the more likely they'll give you free stuff or buy stuff off of you. With the peppy villager, expect it to take around 20 to 30 minutes to reach max friendship with this technique. It's worth noting too that Feng Shui and Katrina fortunes have no effect on increasing these dialogue odds. As you continue to increase friendship with the villager, you will start to accumulate free stuff as well as some money. If you'd like to jumpstart the process of making money quickly, you can also search for the money rock and golden spot around town to make around 14,000 bells. With a bit of money and a handful of items in your inventory, everything is in place to begin. What we're looking for is a specific dialogue in which the peppy villager will offer you a wad of cash for one of your items. This wad of cash will be equal to half the value of your bells displayed in your bell inventory. For example, if you have 14,000 bells in your bell inventory, you will be offered 7,000 bells for your item. The max amount of bells you can hold in your bell inventory is 99,999, which means the most amount of bells you'll be offered is 49,999. Any bells you have in your item inventory, but outside your bell inventory, are not counted. Furthermore, you will want to always have an open slot in your inventory, because if you have at least 86,667 bells, you will earn more bells than you can actually hold, resulting in getting short change since you can only hold up to 30,000 bell bag denominations outside your bell inventory. With this information, it's now all about optimizing the strategy to earn money as quickly as possible. You can rearrange your bell inventory value by taking out and inserting different bell bag denominations. It's generally best to have at least 95,000 bells or more in your bell inventory for good optimization. 
You can spend time fiddling with getting as close to 99,999 bells as possible, but generally the time you spend doing so will not be worth it. As you can see, I'm triggering this dialogue on average once every 6 to 7 minutes. At an average of about 47,500 bells each time, you can earn an average of around 450,000 bells per hour. Just maintain this strategy for a couple hours and you'll make millions of bells in no time. This is enough to pay off your entire house debt on your very first day, and still have plenty leftover money for whatever else you'll ever want to accomplish in Animal Crossing. This has been How to Earn Millions of Bells on Your First Day in Animal Crossing. Feel free to ask any questions you may have in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for more content, and also follow me on Twitch to watch me stream various Animal Crossing challenges live. Thanks for watching.